Jacob. He had really big feet. <laughs> Welcome to Still a Part of Us, a place where moms and dads share the story of their child who was stillborn or who died in infancy. I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. We are grateful you joined us today. Please note that this is a story of loss and has triggers. Thanks to our lost parents who are willing to be vulnerable and share their children with us. If you're listening to this podcast, just know that on our YouTube channel, there are pictures and videos that are related to the stories that are being shared. Subscribe and share it with a friend that might need it and tell them to subscribe. Why? Because people need to know that even though our babies are no longer with us, they're still a part of us. We are so happy to have Jessica here today to talk about her sweet little Jacob. Um, she is actually coming all the way from um, the UK. And so we're grateful to have a little bit more of uh, international representation um, today. So thank you, Jessica, for coming on and chatting with us today. Thank you for having me. This is a great opportunity. Thank you for help, let, letting me share Jacob's story. Oh, we're so pleased to be able to do that. So um, so tell us actually a little bit about yourself, Jessica. Uh, what does your family look like right now? And where are approximately are you guys located? And um, what do you do for a living? Or what do you like to do in your spare time and all that jazz? Yeah, so I so we live in London, the UK. Um, it's me and my husband. We, we've been together for 13 years now, married no sorry 12 years <laughs> married for three uh -huh. <laughs> um so I'm originally from London well my background is my parents are Polish so both born in Poland and they moved here had me and it's just me I'm an only child and mm -hmm. the rest of the family are all in Poland do Otherwise, you speak Polish then yes I do yes oh, that's awesome <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, my husband he He's from, he's an army kid, well, mm. Royal Navy, Royal Air Force kid. So he kind of moved around England and abroad. So he lived in Europe, different countries as well. And his family are, are spread all over. Mm. <laughs> so fun. And then did you guys just meet in London? So, no, we met at university, so mm. in Manchester. Uh, so that was, that. so we met 13 years ago, been mm -hmm. together for 12 um so yeah we we then moved back to, we moved to London that's where he got a job and where my parents were and yeah this is where we've decided to settle down oh good and it's near my parents so they only live half an hour away so oh so nice yeah <laughs> yeah and his parents are they still back in Manchester or are they still uh, no, about yeah so, so his parents, one one is in Belgium and the mom's in Sheffield, so up north. Oh, okay. Near Manchester. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Okay. And what do you guys like to do in your spare time and, and hobbies and such? So, so um, I guess we love to go for walks. We've, we've got a new puppy. She's oh. only six months old, so we're going on lots of walks recently. Oh, yeah. We We like to go cinema, go out to eat food socializing with friends and family and I guess my hobby is sort of arts and crafts stuff I love making things and sort of photo albums I love doing stuff like that that's great how fun and Jake loves barbecuing oh, does <laughs> <That's he? it. laughs> you know you gotta like uh Lee he and Lee need to talk because I was like they we talked earlier that Manchester United was a yeah. a common bond there and then I was like barbecue yeah. okay yeah they could, they might get along just fine yeah. <laughs> okay and then um so it is just you and your husband at the time of Jacob's birth is that right so Jacob was your first yes yes so so we'd been together I guess how many years so so last so, so last year we'd been together for about 12 years sorry <laughs> no we've been together for 11 years and we decided it was time to start trying for a baby yeah um we so we we started trying and got pregnant first month we were shocked we didn't realize it could happen that quick and felt very lucky because you know it it, it could have not been yeah. like that yeah um so yeah, 
So not so not as well, so a little bit of a surprise, but planned. Like Yeah, just... planned, yeah. Um, but yeah, we were we're expecting to be trying for six to twelve months. So when it happened straight away, I guess I was shocked and nervous. Jake, my husband was just really excited straight away. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I yeah. It is always kind of a delight, but then also like, oh no, like we're we're yeah. re- like really pregnant now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were still we still hadn't bought a place. So as soon as we got pregnant, we were like, okay, now is the time to it's really time. go and buy a house. <laughs> so that that's that's what we were doing in that's- the early early pregnancy. That's so fun. And then did you, so when you found out, was it kind of just like, oh, my period is not, I miss my period. I'm going to just yeah. pee on a stick kind of thing. Yeah. So I, my period was about, about, about a week late. My periods were never that regular. They were mm-hmm. always between four and five weeks. It wasn't sort of, a, you know, a site, I had an exact cycle day. Um, so I, I was about a week late and I really wasn't expecting it. I, I decided I'd do a, a pregnancy test on day seven. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was just positive. So I then woke up, woke Jake up. And, <laughs> and um, well, I wrapped the, the pregnancy test um, in a little box and wrapped it up and gave it to him as a present. And then I wrote, I'm pregnant on my belly <laughs> and woke him up like that. <laughs> How fun. And he was so excited, I'm sure. Yes, right away. He was so excited. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. So um, I am not totally sure how the healthcare system works in the UK. So do you um, do they recommend um, going in at a certain point in time? Do they do ultrasounds and all that all that kind of early on? Or do they ask you to kind of wait? Um, so you contact um, the hospital you'd like to be seen at mm-hmm. and um, you, start, you self-refer yourself and then you're seen by a midwife around eight weeks. Okay. Um, so then they take a full history, see if there's any risk factors and you would then have your first scan at 12 weeks. Okay. Okay. So, so eight weeks and then 12 weeks. You wouldn't have an early scan unless you paid for it or if you had a history of, of loss or or some other issues. Gotcha. Okay. So um, at that eight-week appointment, what, did you go in and see a midwife? How did everything look yeah. then? Yeah, so everything looked fine. Um, everything was really low risk. Um, they weren't worried at all about anything. Um, so, yeah, I mean, those first 12 weeks, I was really aware of, of miscarriage being quite mm. high in that in that 12 weeks. So I was almost almost expecting it because I, I knew it was it was quite common. For some reason, I was just anxious that whole 12 weeks that that we would lose the baby. But then at 12 weeks, when we actually saw the baby and there was a heartbeat, then my nerves just settled. I thought, OK, this is it. There's going to be a baby. Yeah, <laughs> I had no idea what could go wrong, really. Yeah. And how were you feeling throughout that first kind of trimester time? Um, so until about seven to eight weeks, I had pretty much no symptoms. So mm. I thought I'm not pregnant. <laughs> um, but then around eight weeks, I started having a bit of nausea, mm. uh, extreme tiredness, uh, extreme hunger <laughs> and um, yeah, just general bloatedness. So that kind of confirmed but I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, you're like, okay, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but, but none of the symptoms were too severe. The nausea was manageable. I think only two days I had to take off work. But I mm. <laughs> yeah. Generally, I was okay. Oh, good. That's always nice to have that little bit of like, oh, some people just throw up the entire time of their pregnancy. Yes. I was like, this, that would be miserable. So how, how do they work? I mean, uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you uh, got to see the baby at 12 weeks at the scan. Um, did Jake, was Jake there at that? Was he able to yeah. come? I'm just not sure how yeah, that looked. So it was last, it was summer of 2021. So yeah, things were quite settled down around COVID by then. So so yeah, he was allowed into the scans and everything. Yes. Um, and I just realized I did not, I usually do this, I so I apologize. So can we get some reference of when Jacob was born? <laughs> So Jacob was born in December 2021. 
So that's about 10 months away. In two days, it will be 10 months exactly. Yeah, at the time of this recording. So um, so everybody, Jessica, is very new. And I, I was like surprised that she reached out to us, but I'm glad that we could um, we could capture his story. So thank you so much for that little reference point. Okay, so um, you guys were able to see Jacob on the scan and he looked good. You saw his heartbeat and you felt really kind of relieved, like you'd kind of ma- yeah. passed that milestone. Yeah, exactly. We just, we felt confident that everything was okay and we started telling people around then as well. We told mm-hmm. my parents a bit a few weeks earlier because I was going away with them for a weekend, so I knew I wouldn't be able to hide not not having a drink. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> so exactly. I had to tell them, um, <laughs> and then after twelve weeks, we told everyone. Awesome! I, I'm sure everybody was overjoyed. I think that's yeah. so so fun. Okay, and then um, so after twelve weeks, then you're going along. I I'm actually curious. Did you guys have any plans on finding out if it was a boy or a girl or if, um, and did you guys have a list of running names, that type of thing? Yeah, so so we were going to find out what we were having. Um, and so that was around, the, that was the 12, uh, the 20 week scan actually mm-hmm, mm-hmm. found out. But actually from, from the moment we found out we were pregnant, we thought it was a girl. For some reason, we just both thought it was going to be a girl, but then turned out it was a boy <laughs> <laughs> surprise <laughs> yeah so we did have we had quite a few names for girls but not so many for boys we couldn't agree on many boys names boy names but, are hard <laughs> yeah yeah but Jacob we both liked mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah we went with it that's so great yeah we Is pretty it... much we chose the name pretty much the day we found out he was a boy oh really yeah you're like that's it um, is there a family significance then to it just because? No, no, it was just, just really the only boy name that we both agreed on. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good enough reason right there. <laughs> I've, I've loved the name for years and also it translates really nicely into Polish. It's mm. Jakub mm-hmm. and then it's actually sweetened in Polish to Kubosz, which is really cute, I thought. And it and also Kubosz is Winnie the Pooh in Polish, so I always associate Jacob with Winnie the Pooh now. Oh, that's so sweet! Oh, I love that so much. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so then, so at the twenty week scan, uh, Jake was able to come with you. I'm assuming for that one as well. Um, you wanted to find out, awesome, which is great. How did the rest of the scan go? Like, was there anything? that they brought up any concerns that they had at all about him his anatomy anything about your placenta did everything look good yeah everything looked absolutely fine no worries at all so so that would have been the last scan that I would have been offered during the pregnancy because everything was was so fine low risk and normal yeah isn't that yeah (sighs) okay everything is normal. You're looking Mm -hmm. great. And, um, how was the rest of the, like, let's talk about, so after 20 weeks, then, um, tell me how like everything else kind of progressed. Like you were going in monthly or how was that looking as time went on from that point? So then it was just, so in, in England, you're mid, you're the the care is just midwife led Mm -hmm. if you're low risk. So for the rest of, of the pregnancy I was just seeing a midwife so at 25 weeks I think and then at 28 weeks I had a Mm. midwife appointment um and yeah they they sort of measured the belly everything was always fine in blood tests and urine samples so yeah just no problems at all and how are you feeling were you feeling pretty decently yeah yeah from I think the nausea lasted to about week 15 or 16 Mm -hmm. and then I was absolutely fine I had a bit of backache the midwife said it's that because I was running at the time well once a week I I went for a little jog she Mm -hmm. said maybe stop that now um, because it could be causing it to be worse but um other than that yeah I, I was fine felt fine okay and then so you saw the midwife at 25 weeks 28 weeks um and then kind of tell, walk me through what happened after those appointments yeah so so then it got to about 20 i was about 29 weeks 
it was really two weeks before I was due to go on maternity leave. Mm. So basically just um, as reference, I'm a dentist. And so I was working full time at the time. Um, it's a patient facing role. So I was a bit worried about COVID at the time. Right. And I did inquire with head office whether I could be off during the pregnancy because I knew the year earlier pregnant women didn't have to work in face, p- patient facing roles. Okay. Um, but at, at the time I was pregnant, that wasn't the case anymore. Mm-hmm. So society, the government, everything was pretty, they, they were quite relaxed around COVID by then. I right. Think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so the only way to be off was to go on maternity early. So I planned to finish working about two months um, before Jacob was due. Okay. And so then two weeks before I was, less than two weeks before I was meant to start maternity, I caught COVID. Oh. And, yeah. And, um, well, it was it was because I was taking a test twice a week, the mm. lateral flow tests. Mm-hmm. and um and yeah and just one of them came back positive and I didn't ha- I only had sort of tiredness that day of, of the test so I didn't expect it to be COVID at all um but then later on the symptoms did develop but they mm-hmm. were they were always quite mild um I did lose my my sense of smell and taste I had a fever for about two days but I was functional not bed bound I, mm-hmm. I felt fine generally um, so that was so yeah I was around 29 weeks then and I was isolating for 10 days mm-hmm. and the day after I finished my isolation I needed to get out go for a walk I had enough of being indoors yes and just um, went to a cafe sat down with a chai latte and was reading my book and I just realized that I wasn't feeling Jacob as much. I was feeling him, but Mm -hmm. his movements just weren't as strong. But it didn't like worry me too much because he he had sort of active days, quiet days. Um, About a month earlier, I a month or two earlier, I had the same sort of little mini wave of panic of oh I haven't felt him much, Um, but then everything was fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, so that day, I guess I just was more aware of his movements, so I was really monitoring them. And they never got that active that day. Yeah, I just went for a little walk uh, near where we live. And I'll always remember that walk. It's one of my last walks with Jacob. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so that that day I went back home. Um, it was a Saturday and my husband was going to go out for a little Christmas party slash birthday. And I decided to stay home because I didn't want to still be infecting people just in case. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, um, and yeah, that evening was fine. Like I, I still felt the odd movement. It never got too, he, he never got too active. Um, and that night Jake came home around midnight, 1am and I felt Jacob kick and, so I felt reassured and fell asleep. But I now know that kick was my last kick that I felt. So, Sorry. so I, I believe that um, J- Jacob was waiting for his daddy to come home and give him one last kick. I'm so sorry. I... The next morning, did you wake up and... Tell me yeah, how that so was. The next morning I woke up. Um, I actually that morning had planned a virtual baby shower for my friend who lives in Australia. So that was at 9.30 in the morning. So I got out of bed. I didn't feel him. Um, but I, I mean, I I wasn't I didn't always feel him in the morning or didn't always notice him in the mornings because mm-hmm. I'd just get up, get ready, go to work. Um, so I thought it's okay you know I, I've just not felt him yet mm-hmm. and we had this virtual baby shower it lasted about two three hours and after I still didn't feel him so I told Jake and we googled it and we looked up what to do and and it said to like do some jumping jacks have something to drink that's sweet or cold so we tried all that um 
Jake even put his ear to my belly because previously he thought he had heard the heartbeat. I, I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> I mean, they say Dopplers aren't the best <laughs> to yeah. use to reassure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, he he couldn't hear anything, and and so that's when we we called the hospital and they said, okay, come in. And even at that point, I don't think we were that worried. Like, I, I mean. I think I was thinking the worst case is that he's struggling a bit in there. Maybe they need to do a emergency cesarean or something. Mm, mm-hmm. The fact okay. that he died was just didn't cross my mind at all. Yeah, that, that can happen. Jessica, really quick question: I um, were you doing anything like counting kicks or um, anything to kind of track his movement? Actually, no. That's that's something I did want to mention because. Um, Yeah, in England, it's not really promoted to count kicks. If Mm -hmm. anything, I think the last few years they have discouraged it because they thought it was unreliable or something. But um, so I I wasn't counting kicks. They just always said to learn your baby's pattern. And if anything's abnormal, then come in. I I was I I feel guilty about this, but I was just really busy at work. (laughs) I just, I never really learned Jacob's pattern. So that's something that I'll always feel guilty about and regret. But um, um, yeah, I, I had, I just didn't really learn the pattern up to that point in our 31 weeks. Yeah. I, I, it is still a bit of, I mean, like, it's hard to get their pattern sometimes, especially when, I mean, you're, you have a really kind of an intense job, <laughs> like you're a dentist and you are hunched over and you're in. Yeah. So I, it would be, I think it would be difficult. I, um, you know, this is not going to make you feel any better, but you should like, don't be so hard on yourself. Cause I know that it's, so, uh, you had not felt his patterns and, and I mean, sorry, you had not felt him. You kind of did a few things to see if there would be anything that could help. Um, with the movement so did you guys go into the hospital yeah after? yeah so so we went into hospital um we so yeah for some reason Jake wasn't allowed in to the oh. maternity assessment unit even though he was allowed to all the other scans and stuff hmm. um but um, he had to stay downstairs in the cafe so I was just waiting. They knew that I came in with reduced movements, but they didn't seem worried. They, I was waiting for about forty-five minutes or something. Um, I still, I wasn't, I wasn't really worried. Um, I was actually on my phone just googling um, Jacob's name and seeing what what saint he represents or something. Oh, yeah. yeah, and and then I, I remember this. Um, song on the radio that was playing and it was angels by robbie williams Mm -hmm. and i don't i don't know why but i think i think i got like a thought of oh imagine if i i don't even remember but for some reason i I somehow thought jacob was an angel i don't know i I really don't remember what i was thinking but that song will always it's just it's i just really vividly remember it and thinking that's weird that angels is playing I, I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah Weird, like a sign or something <laughs> yeah yeah funny how things yeah, yeah. show up when they do um, and go yeah, ahead so then um the so then the midwife she checked my blood pressure to I like, gave a urine sample and eventually they took me took me in to put check um, the heartbeat with a doppler so the midwife couldn't find the heartbeat I think she changed machines, still couldn't, got a more senior midwife. There was a trainee midwife there as well, and she was standing in the corner looking a bit bored. So I I wasn't really thinking anything was wrong at this point. I was just like, okay, yeah, machine doesn't work, and uh, they're not too experienced, fine, get someone else. Um, But still nothing. And then they took me to the ultrasound room, Mm -hmm. and junior doctor was scanning me then a more senior doctor came in also scanned me and at this point I was just lying there like it always feels like I I I wasn't there because I'm normally one to I'm anxious I jump to worst case scenario I'm asking all the questions is everything okay and 
there I was just thinking everything's fine mm-hmm. just lying there it feels almost like an out-of-body experience or something yeah. yeah but eventually that senior doctor said I'm sorry but there's no heartbeat and I don't I, I don't think I quite understood what she was saying it, it didn't register I just I, I I think I was just in shock I didn't cry I just didn't understand <laughs> right what was going on yeah, you're like, wait, how can this be? Because at this point in time, you're about, I'm assuming, around 31 so I'm 31 weeks. 31 on the, yeah, exactly, 31 weeks that day I was. And yeah, it's, well, and especially since when you even said that, because they, they said the same thing of like, there's no heartbeat. It feels like, well, that's not associated with my child. I mean, like, you know, yeah, it's just, like something totally different. Like, yeah, it, <laughs> exactly. I was like, no, yeah. what, so let's talk about my child now. Like, you know, like yeah. you just don't think about that. And then, but it's, um, so you were in shock and did they, what happened after that? What did they say to you? Cause like Jake's still downstairs in the cafe and yeah. It's like, yeah. So I, actually, I think when I was walking to that ultrasound room, I think I did text him saying, oh, they can't find the heartbeat with the Doppler so I'm just getting an ultrasound so he was already apparently panicking downstairs even though I I actually wasn't at that point and so the doctor said do you want us to call someone and I said no I'll just text my husband to come up so he came up so those few minutes I was just sat there waiting for him sort of in shock and he came up came in and I looked at him sort of shook my head as if you know bad news and the doctors told him. So they left us for a few minutes. We hugged and cried. I, I was just in shock. I didn't, I, I, I was, I was teary, but I wasn't really crying. I just didn't understand. Just really wanted to know what's next. What's, what now, you know, yeah. what's the next stage? So yeah, we, we called the doctors back in and and then the consultant came and she confirmed everything. and and. And she said, well, you've just had COVID. So we have seen pregnancy loss with COVID like this recently. And that's when I realised it it probably was COVID that caused this. Mm. But I mean, all the way until now, even even when we were worried about the movements, I I I just forgot that I had COVID. It it kind of, it was so mild. The 10 day isolation was over. Mm -hmm. To me, COVID wasn't even a factor anymore. If if I'd known it could have done this, I would have monitored his his movements, you know, every day of my isolation. I, I might have picked up earlier that he, he wasn't moving as much. Mm-hmm. Or even come in that day that, that I thought maybe he's not kicking as strongly. So I'll always wonder about that, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, there's always all these what ifs that yeah. come up. So, and because they didn't have any recommendations when you did have COVID about following up, right? They didn't kind of recommend no, anything. Nothing. No, I, I told the midwife, and she just said to um, stay hydrated, take a paracetamol if I have a fever, um, and to call an ambulance if if I start having difficulty breathing. Because I think most of the news was saying that with COVID in pregnancy, it's the risk to the woman, right. how a lot of them can end up in, in intensive care. So it was more the risk to me that we were all worried about. We didn't think that it, it could affect Jacob at all. Yeah. So it, did it hit you then when they said that? that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's when we, well, that's when we, we yeah, started to, thinking it must have been COVID. COVID. Um, So the consultant came in and started talking to you about the different options. So what did, um, what did you guys end up deciding to do? They, they recommended having a natural birth. Mm -hmm. So I just said, okay, if that's what you, they know best. Right. Um, And they gave me a pill to start, process and said that I'd have to come back in two days to give birth um they took some bloods and um yeah we were just allowed to go home I didn't we didn't really get much information about 
what what the birth will look like. I hadn't had any antenatal classes yet, so I had no idea what to expect. To be honest, I I was I was at that point I was terrified of the birth. That's all I was then thinking about, like getting through that. I was just imagining some horror show giving birth to like death and blackness and uh I just that that was terrifying those yeah. few days before the birth. I don't know. Is that pretty typical that they would be like, okay, your body's not quite ready yet. Here's a pill, head home. You will, that's the option right now. You're not going to be able to start pregnant. I mean, you're not going to be able to start um, labor. Yeah, I didn't have any other options. Oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't say that you can can stay here now and, and induce labor now. It was just, I guess, the protocol maybe in that hospital. I'm not sure. This pill was meant to start the induction or something. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So you you guys head home, and how are you guys feeling? Like, are you just because? Well, I, yeah. I guess we just we couldn't believe it. I was in shock. My my brain was just going into sort of like right. What what do I need to do? then so I'm gonna have to go back to work because actually the next day I was meant to have my last day before maternity so I was just thinking okay so I'll have to go back to work so I need to email work and I was just going into sort of organizational overdrive mode but we got home we we called our parents we told them all Uh, my parents live nearby only half an hour away so they came over straight away and we just all cried and hugged and like we no one could believe it what what's happened you know it's just such a a shock for the family yeah it's so yeah you just can't understand you're like what no so um is your when you're at home um what does your is your body starting to yeah so I think the the cramps started around that evening so I started taking some paracetamol um uh we we just sort of went to bed tried to sleep I, I couldn't sleep that night at all I had to get up I, I wrote in my diary for a bit I I then started actually googling what happens when your baby dies inside you and that's that's when I I learned that I was having a, a stillborn so I found this charity I think it's only UK based it's called Tommy's oh yeah and it's, mm-hmm. yeah yeah, mm-hmm, it's got a lot, they do lots of research into pregnancy loss and have just so much information mm-hmm. online. So I was just reading all about stillbirth and, and what happens. And 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 that's, I think, when it all hit me. That's when I realized that my baby has died and he's coming, come, going to come in two days and I'm going to meet him. And I need to just make lot, as many memories with him as I can. So yeah, that that website. I'm so happy that I came across that website rather than some dark hole on the internet. Yeah, but it um it just yeah all the information about how to make memories with your baby and I saw all the pictures of parents with their baby. So it just really hit home what what was happening and and yeah, it was. I can. I didn't sleep at all that night. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you just realize, and I. I'm not sure what kind of articles you read and stuff about making memories, but you realize, like, in that time when you're like, I need to spend all. I get to spend all of my time with my child in this, like, whatever, however many days that or day or hours that you get, and and that's supposed to be your lifetime of memories with yeah. your son, and it's it's really crummy. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you found Tommy's because I think it is an awesome organization. And uh, what were some of the things that you wanted to do or that you were like, I'd like this to happen when we do go deliver him? Yeah, so I, I went through it all with Jake after the next day and we discussed how you can sort of wash your baby, you can put a diaper on, dress them. They organize um like charity photographers to come and take mm-hmm. photos of the baby so i i would have done 
probably all of that yeah <laughs> to make as memory as many memories as possible I think Jake was was struggling a bit he he thought to, it might be too much that we shouldn't do too much so um he agreed that we should see him and stuff like that but maybe not not get a photographer so we decided not to do that um but otherwise I I saw that we could also take hand and footprints so I already had kids bought for that oh, okay. um already for the birth I, I think I bought them back when I was 12 weeks pregnant actually <laughs> <laughs> um so I made sure I packed all that into the into the hospital bag um as well as a little baby grow to dress him in because we, we hadn't had a baby shower yet so we mm. didn't really have many things um and we also had just bought a house so we didn't have any any baby stuff yet right so just two baby grows so I picked the one that was a bit smaller <laughs> yeah I took that in with me and also a little blanket that was personalized um and that was from Jacob's auntie so Jake's sister so we took that in to wrap him up in that oh that's great so you um went to did they did they basically say come back in two days and see where you're at or Okay. Yeah, they said they said I I might stop bleeding and if it's too much I can come come in sooner. Yeah. But otherwise just to come in two days. Okay. So I actually did wake up. So I, I finally managed to fall asleep at like eight a.m. the next day, and I was woken up to bleeding um, after a few hours, and that kind of really shocked me. And I screamed and didn't. Yeah, that that was just a real shock. But Jake came in and was like, no, that's what they said is normal. So, um, so yeah, the pains were getting worse throughout the day. We just went for a little walk that day and, and uh, to the shop to buy some pads that I'd need after the birth and, and went to my parents for, for dinner that evening. Oh, I just can't, I can't imagine like the, how somber everything was because I, I like, yeah. It's like an out of body experience, such a blur. Yeah. Just, yeah. You don't know what's happening. No. Okay. So you guys go in the next day. Yeah. Um, check in. So we go in the afternoon. Uh, we called them up just to make sure they're ready for us. Um, and yeah, we we went in, got there about two to three p.m. on the fourteenth of December, and um. We, at first, the reception didn't know why we're there. They were asking, yeah. like, so how many weeks are you? I said, 31 weeks. I'm here to give birth. And it, it was a bit stressful because they didn't know <laughs> why we were there. Um, but eventually they called to the midwives, and, and I think they had our name written down. They took us into the room. We settled in, had a midwife and a doctor and a bereavement midwife come to see us to explain a little bit more. And around 5 p.m., they gave me the pessary. So that was, I don't know, the, the next stage of induction. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. And um, that's, was that an IV drug or? No, it was pessary. So a tablet inserted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they said I'd need a new one every three hours, that they can't predict how long labor will be. Um, so. Yeah, we we just were just chilling in the room. I was reading a bit, trying to walk around, thinking that might help labor. Mm -hmm. I, I heard it, it could, mm -hmm. walking yeah. around. Um, and it got to about 8 p.m. So when the second pessary was due, it started getting really, the cramps were regular and getting a lot more painful. So that's when I asked for gas and air. Um, they gave me the second pessary. Uh, they did a sweep. Is that the same thing in America? I am not totally <laughs> sure. Probably not. <laughs> um, well, they kind of, I don't know, they do something inside. <laughs> okay. And just, oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe just uh, maybe break the water or something yeah, of that nature. To, okay. Like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was getting really painful. So I asked for the, like the morphine drip to be um, connected but the midwife said if, if I'm planning an epidural anyway mm. to just have that done because the anesthetist is here and so I agreed um, and they were setting that up 
it didn't work so it was it was yeah that that hour that next hour or so was really painful getting worse and worse around 9 p.m my parents came so we had this whole room to ourselves and I could have as many people as I wanted so that was nice um so they arrived around nine that was in the middle of all the epidural craziness yeah and yeah they yeah it wasn't working and I think they gave me a, a a shot of morphine because that then made me really drowsy and I don't mm. quite remember fully the sequence of events <laughs> yeah yeah um, of course but eventually the painkillers kicked in and um around I don't know it, it all happened so quickly I guess at 9 30 the painkillers started working and I was falling asleep between contractions um suddenly I felt my waters break oh then they were moving me to a birthing bed and suddenly I I thought I felt something and the midwife just said no no it'll be just more waters and she looked down and was like no your baby's coming so it just all happened so fast he was born at at 10 33 p.m oh wow like an hour later (laughs) yeah like and I think just one push he just he just slid out so easily. Yeah. And I'll always say that, think that Jacob just wanted to help me along. Yeah. <laughs> Not oh. make it too hard for me. What were your uh, um, post birth plans and or preferences? Did they, it sounds like you had a bereavement midwife who did yeah. help you through that. Did, did you guys talk about what you guys wanted to happen after he was born? Yeah. So, I guess the little they gave us a little booklet when we got to the hospital and it had a few ideas with of the making memories and stuff like that, um, which I'd already read on the Tommy's website. Mm-hmm. But we did we did we didn't want to look at him straight away. We wanted to ask the midwife just to check him over to see if he'd deteriorated or anything. So I'd read that could happen. But still, when he was born, I still glanced down and I just saw him all curled up in a little ball. My mum said, don't look, but I did. And I mean, he yeah, he just looked normal. So we asked the midwife, is he OK? And she said he's perfect. So she wrapped him up in our little blanket and, and I got to hold him then. Oh, what did he look like? Well, he he was all... Also- he had was covered in in the white stuff, yeah, mm-hmm. that waxy stuff. So mm-hmm. I didn't know what that was. Yeah, I was like, is is that normal? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've since read that that's normal, and mm-hmm. it usually washes off by the time they're full term. Um, so I I I just at that point I was just holding Jacob. I couldn't I couldn't believe he was a baby that he was my baby. I couldn't, I didn't know what to say. I was just in awe of him, just, you know, staring at him, yeah, not believing it. Yeah, not believing it. Mm. Your parents were there and yes. Jake yeah. was there. I've... And anybody else was there? No, no, just my parents and Jake. Looking back, I, I guess I wouldn't have minded Jake's parents as well. Yeah. Just to have as many family members Oh, see him hold him because but I guess you, you don't think of that back yeah then. yeah I only you can only say that you know think later what you could have done <laughs> yeah exactly uh but and my mom cut the cord oh she did is that what <laughs> yeah. uh, did you ask her to do that or is that um well the midwife asked Jake and he didn't want to so my mom said I'll do it <laughs> <laughs> there you go um and so you guys, so you were holding him. Um, was did Jake um, hold him? Did everybody get no, a chance to hold him? So, so Jake didn't want to hold him. He just, I think, it was just too hard for him, and he thought it'd be harder if he held him. So, so he didn't want to hold him. Yeah, I have since we have since discussed it, and he he doesn't regret it. He does. He thinks it wouldn't been a lot harder if he had held him maybe one day he'll regret it but for now he's he's happy with his decision okay um, my parents were there and held him though that first night really <laughs> yeah 
Um, and did you tell, were you referring to him as Jacob the entire time, by the way, like even before he was born? No, only, only me and Jake were. Oh, okay. Um, but then the midwife said, so does he have a name? And we kind of looked at each other and both said Jacob. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah, he was always going to be Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> How big, how big was he? How big did he end up so, being? He was, um, so three pounds, six ounces and 45 centimeters in length. Wonderful. So, and his, his feet were the size of a 34 week old, apparently. <laughs> He's got <laughs> so big only, feet. <laughs> it was only what, 31 weeks, but he was a 34 week foot size. <laughs> <laughs> and he also had very long hands. So oh, really? His, his were were longer than his palm oh and um that's that's I kind of have big hands so I think he had my hands <laughs> oh <laughs> oh that's so fun did you um were you able to look him over then so you were able to see his feet and his hands yeah yeah so he was he was wrapped briefly wrapped in in the blanket but then the midwife um took him away to weigh him and stuff and and she said, oh, he's done a little poo. <laughs> and I, I, for a split second, thought, oh, is he alive? But he wasn't. And yeah. the midwife said, do you want to bathe him or, or put a diaper on him? So I said, let's let's put a diaper on him. Um, it was the first time I'd ever put a diaper on a baby. So I was really nervous. And, yeah. And also scared that I was going to damage him because he just, he felt so fragile, you know, his... His little hands and feet were were wrinkly from the, the water, the amniotic mm-hmm. fluid. It just, he felt like I, I could really damage him. But the midwife was so lovely. She she just was, you know, talking me through it, just treating Jacob like an alive little baby. And it, oh. it just really helped because I guess in that moment, I, I didn't know what to say, how to act. So it really helped having someone there to just be like, oh, gorgeous boy and everything. Oh, that's, that's so wonderful. Like, I, I love hearing when there are healthcare providers yeah. that are so compassionate and kind to our to our um, family members. So, yeah. so you guys, so you put on the diaper, which was probably tiny, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was tiny. And then I dressed him in the little baby bro. Mm. And yeah, just wrapped him up in his blanket and um, I was just holding him for like two hours, just staring at him. And I think that because the, the morphine was making me drowsy, I, I was just staring at him and falling asleep. <laughs> and and at one, around midnight, I think after midnight, my parents were saying they were going to go, but I didn't want them to go because I was scared I was going to drop him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but um. Yeah, they they left for the night, and um, the midwife asked if she, if we wanted Jacob in the room in in a cold cot, but uh, Jake thought it'd be best if if he was taken away for the night, mm. um, and um, we could see him again the next day. So we got a few hours sleep then, um, oh, and um, and yeah, and then we got to see him again the next day and have a good few hours with him again. So my parents came back in the morning. Mm. Um, we were waiting. We wanted to see a Catholic priest because I was raised Catholic. Mm-hmm. And we were waiting around for that till about midday. And, yeah, we just got to spend more time with him. That's when we took the hand and footprints and oh, these little clay molds as well. Of mm-hmm. the, the feet. Um, just lots of photos and videos. And, and yeah, yeah, I love I I look back on that my stay in hospital as not just a horrible day, but actually the best day because I got to meet Jacob and spend time with him. Yeah, yeah. I know it is. It's this like it was horrible and awesome too. Like there's yeah. you know it's there's such a mix of emotions that happen. So you guys, it seems like you did a lot with him though that's uh I'm glad that you were able mm. to spend that time yeah. um so the um the priest came then around midday um did you guys have do anything special with when um, he came so he he just did a little blessing and a prayer mm-hmm. but actually when when Jacob was born my mum did 
did actually bring some holy water and she baptized him. Mm. Um, I th- my whole family is quite religious, so I think her sister just suggested it, which was yeah. really nice. And then when the priest came, another a blessing, and I mean it was emotional, um, but but it was lovely. Yeah, good. And then we were just uh, waiting around for a few hours until they they sorted all my discharge medication and paperwork. Mm-hmm. I actually I don't know that I could have stayed longer. You know, looking yeah. back, I, I would have stayed the whole day. I was. I don't know. No one really said that I could stay another yeah. night or anything. But I do I do think my family would have said it's probably time to go yeah. if I want to stay longer, to be honest. Yeah. But I mean just looking back, I, I wish I had spent more time with him. Yeah. We all kind of have that. <laughs> I know I always like, yeah, I think that too. I wish I had more time with him. So uh, I do, I guess I don't know, um, this, was there any sort of, um, did, so they didn't tell you a time frame that you could have Jacob? No. Was there a hospital policy or anything? They just hadn't mentioned anything. No, they hadn't, no. Okay. So I, I was just expecting once, yeah, all the discharge is, is done, paperwork is done, I just need to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I and I don't once again don't know the procedures and policies of the hospital there, um, but do they start talking to you about um, how what what will happen to Jacob after you leave? I mean, did they start talking like, do you want to bury him? Do you want to cremate him? I mean, did they go yeah. through all of that too? Yeah. So the bereavement midwife actually went through that with us. So she did that on the day before, mm-hmm. um, well, the day he was born, just before he was born. Um, she said, here's a booklet with everything. We will go through paperwork the next day. Um, so just have a little think. Do you want the hospital to take care of everything or will we want to? We want burial or cremation. So we went through all the paperwork that, that next day with the bereavement midwife. Mm-hmm. So we decided we wanted to do our own service mm-hmm. and and we also decided we wanted burial as well. Okay. Wonderful. Um, and then so uh you I don't this is my this is my worst um I hate this part of but when you guys left or when you had to give Jacob up, um, how did that look when that time came? Um, well the the midwife just came in. We we um, placed him I placed him back into his cold cot and and she just wheeled him away that's it I don't yeah know. but he did stay in the the mortuary um of the hospital so I was able to actually visit him as, oh, as much okay. as I wanted actually um again I wish I saw him more <laughs> but I decided not not to go too much because I was scared of of just um get almost getting used to having a, a dead baby and then it being too hard to let go yeah. eventually. So I went twice to the mortuary. So for 10 days later, it was on Christmas Eve, oh. Jake's mum came down for Christmas and we took her. So it, it was me, my dad and Jake's mum that went to see Jacob. Mm. as Jake and my mom they they wanted to remember him how he was when he was born yeah which I, I guess but fair enough I mean seeing him at the mortuary he had changed but it was an initial shock but um but I now look back at those pictures and I'm like he's my son it, <laughs> it's fine you know yeah. I still love them pictures they're yeah. all extra memories for me yeah yeah oh yeah and then um, you got to see him a second time after that. Yeah. And after that, on the 30th of December, I went one last time with my dad. And that's when I, I decided that was going to be the last time. And I wrote him a letter from me and daddy and and just made sure he had everything in his in his um, bassinet that he would be buried with. Oh, okay. And, um, and yeah, that was when I, I said goodbye to him. Uh, uh, is burial um 
did you guys get to choose the location and yeah. how does that work? So um, we, we've contacted a funeral director and uh, well, first of all, the, the one at the time where we were living, we contacted the nearest one and they were saying that a few cemeteries were full or something. Mm-hmm. So then the, then I, then the area where we were moving to, I realized there was a cemetery there. So I called them up and they said they had a little baby garden mm. for for these for these sort of babies. And so we contacted a funeral director that was just across the road from the cemetery and just arranged it through that. And in England, baby funerals are actually free. So oh. we don't have to pay for the, the burial, just, just flowers or any extras like right. that that we wanted. Right. I yeah. So did you guys want to have a little kind of a service or a memorial uh, in order to kind of honor Jacob's life? And Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I straight away wanted a, a funeral type thing. We contacted our, our priest. So he's a, a Polish priest mm-hmm. <laughs> where I've always gone to as a child growing up. And um, they they said that because he was born, um, so because he died inside me that he he didn't need like a big mass or a funeral mm. like a proper mass type funeral um which confused me a little because I, I still wanted one yeah but we ended up having the service at the cemetery chapel so it wasn't in the church and just the catholic priest came and, and did the service for us okay but it actually worked out better because I could choose the music and the and the poems and everything, the readings. Whereas in in the Catholic Church or in the Polish one, they're they're more strict. They wouldn't have allowed everything oh, okay. that I wanted. Oh, good. Well, yeah. <laughs> so it that it, it did work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we only had closest family there. So okay. me, my parents, Jake, his parents, sister, and my cousin, who's actually here in London too. Wonderful. So, yeah, sounded like I, it turned out really nicely though like you were able yeah, to plan what you wanted yeah the funeral was about six weeks after Jacob was born so I spent most of January just planning it reading all the poems that I could find and choosing the best one listening to all the music choosing the best ones and making the order of service it was just my way of doing something for Jacob I guess yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you yeah, you're like I'm not gonna have a chance to do yeah plan plan a birthday exactly. party or plan a, anything else. So yeah, so uh, and I am assuming that I hope this is the case, but you do have time off. This was um you had mm-hmm. a fair amount of maternity leave, or I like I said, I'm not sure how it works in the UK or what is allowed, and um if they consider this a leave that is a you know they. Because in the United States, we're not that, like, unfortunately, it's pretty rough um, for for women that deliver babies and they have to go, a stillborn baby, and they have to go back to work kind of quickly. And you're like, ah. Yeah, well, in, in England, if you give birth to a stillborn, so after 24 weeks, you get the full maternity that you were entitled to. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I, I was... I didn't know at the time how how long I would take off, but I took off the full six months um, paid maternity that I I could get with work. So yeah, I I can't imagine going back to work sooner. I I did actually have to go in a few times. Uh, so actually, the first time three weeks after Jacob was born, because um, because I'm a dentist, I had to just go in to see the odd patient. I oh. couldn't transfer care to someone else yeah so I I had to go in and yeah I I can't believe I did (laughs) I know I was like oh my goodness because I'm sure that everybody had questions and that I yeah going back to work after your loss is so rough oh yeah that early on I couldn't speak about it so I I told the manager that to ask people not to ask me anything um yeah, I just needed to go in, do what needs to be done, and then leave. leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, but since I've I've been more open and and want people to ask questions, and I want yeah. to talk about Jacob as much yeah. as possible. <laughs> yeah, I know that's kind of the key. Um, and so 
Um, it's, is there anything else you wanted to tell us about the uh, memorial service that I, I, I don't want to skim over that too much. Cause I'm like, I, I always think that those are so special and the time is, it's kind of sometimes the last time you're going to like see him or, you know, yeah. be with him and talk about him in such an open fashion. Um, anything else that you wanted to touch on with his memorial, his funeral? So he, so, well, firstly, the music I chose, I, I chose, so it's called Canon in the D mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. Patchell Bell. It's, mm-hmm. it's actually a we- more of a wedding song, but when I was Googling songs, I it said that it was also used as a funeral song. And I always wanted that for my wedding, but the church organs were so old that they couldn't play, play oh. that. <laughs> So when I came across it, I thought, oh, my gosh, I couldn't have it for my wedding. So now Jacob has it for his funeral. Yeah. So it felt like it's sort of meant to be in a way. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had a lovely poem that I found called Butterfly that Jake's sister read. Mm-hmm. Um, then we wrote a little letter to Jacob that Jake's dad read. And actually, I I prepared a, a poem that I found online that I, I didn't know if I would manage to read it or not. I saved it to read by the burial site and I managed to read it. So I was very proud <laughs> that I managed, even though yeah. I cried, but <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I, I did it. So I'm proud I did it for Jacob. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that's great. Uh, and, and he is, and he is buried in the cemetery that's kind of close to your home then. Yeah. It's only a, a five minute drive or a 35 minute walk so we go for lots of walks there and it's a really nice little place I have I have since had a few regrets about it mm. I guess everyone has a few but I realized you know that I don't know if I will, well no I won't be able to be buried there with him oh and yeah. I had a bit of a mini panic a few weeks later and I was contacting the cemetery yeah and what 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 can what can be done in the future and they said I I could be potentially cremated and placed there or if I I wanted to I could move him one day oh okay again I realized but we might not stay here forever and that was all a, a yeah a realization that happened after I wish someone could have really discussed that with us a bit more maybe yeah yeah, because yeah. you're, yeah, you, you just don't know. I, yeah, I don't you, think of all these things no. at the time. And you're, I, you are young and you're like, I just had to plan a funeral. And, but that's like, yeah. it, you're kind of putting down roots there too, you know, in a sense. I know. I can't imagine being far away from him now. So we, we might not actually want to move that far now. Yeah. Because Jacob's there. But at least we have the option if, if we really wanted to move. And and then we buy sort of a family grave. We could always move him. So that's really just settled me a little bit. <laughs> yes, for sure. That is I for sure. To. Yeah. Oh, just a side note. Did you guys have, did you, um, is there like a little grave marker or a gravestone that is there? Yes. Did you guys get to plan that or what, is it just a yeah. generic so it's one? A, it's a cross, a wooden cross. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's coming up to a year so we could get a headstone. So I will... I will want to design my own headstone yes. and, and make it lovely. <laughs> yes. But for now, it's it's got lots of flowers. I really enjoy doing the grave up and changing it every few months. And yeah, I've just, I've made a friend in the baby garden, another lost mum. Yes. And we just want to make the area really pretty, lots of flowers and stuff like that. That and yeah, so cool. we, we love going there, just sitting with our babies and chatting with a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. That sounds really delightful. And I, um, yeah, I've met some wonderful people just by running it into them at the baby, yeah. but they call it baby land in our, <laughs> in oh. our cemetery. So, um, yeah. and I know that you mentioned earlier that, um, they just talking about, um, the cause of his, his death. So they do think it's pretty likely that it was from COVID, that yeah. he um he struggled and so yeah. did, did they give you an official or did you guys have an autopsy or anything done yes yes we had the a full post-mortem or mm. autopsy yes and um yeah we just wanted to know exactly what happened right and the results came back about eight weeks later and they and it came back with 
a placental immune condition and oh. that was what killed Jacob well that's what prevented the blood flow to Jacob this oh. immune reaction and the blood clots and in the autopsy report they said that COVID has been linked to this immune condition it's oh. called chronic histiocytic intervilocytis or CHI for short uh -huh. um, but I guess when we went for that post-mortem appointment with the doctors they were really concentrating on that on that inflammatory placental condition and I mean they don't they didn't know much about COVID and how it affects it yet so they were just concentrating on this on this Im immune condition and actually scared us quite a bit because they said it, it's got a high chance of recurrence um oh. future pregnancies yeah like we'd have to have lots of medication and stuff like that I mean we left the post-mortem appointment really devastated they they even went into talking about surrogacy that if it recurs we we might never have, be able to have a child oh. and stuff like that so it was it was really horrible but we I had contacted a, a professor in another hospital in London who does research around CHI and mm -hmm. COVID and we saw him he arranged more tests on the placenta and actually found COVID in the placenta oh okay and, and he said we have seen more and more cases like this where COVID gets into the placenta which in itself is really rare apparently less than one percent of cases with mm -hmm. COVID across the placenta and then once it's in there, it was my body sort of attacking the COVID in the placenta oh. and it caused blockage for Jacob. But he he's confident that it, it won't happen again because it was caused by COVID. But, he, but they can't guarantee it, obviously. Obviously. Yeah, there's just so uh, we're learning so much more every yeah. day about COVID. So uh, I I'm so sorry. I just... Yeah, COVID has been devastating on so many levels. And so to hear that kind of like, oh, it was in the placenta and it was my body that was, you know. I... Yeah, it's so it's so rare that you don't think such a rare thing would happen to you. And yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, horrible. Yeah, it is horrible. Jessica, it's been so lovely to hear Jacob's story and to... I like I just I would be so <laughs> I'm so sad and and for you and and for your loss and but is there anything you would like to leave us with about Jacob that you wanted us to tell to tell us about before we uh, close up yeah I guess um just that he's like forever my firstborn baby cherished and so loved and I want people just to remember him forever and talk about him with me because I just want him remembered as a person. He'll be central in our lives forever. And we'll always celebrate him and include him in every celebration. <laughs> that is wonderful. Yep. They're a part of us, aren't they? They are. <laughs> forever. Forever. Jessica, thank you so, so much again. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share Jacob's story. Yes. <laughs> 